Let's take a look at Barnett Crossbows. Barnett is one of the companies that comes up over and over in recommendations from friends of Bungie. I get emails, I get Facebook comments, I get YouTube comments saying I should look at Barnett Crossbows. Now, my experience with Barnett, I've never actually fired a Barnett Crossbow. That's about to change. I am gonna try one out before I make a decision as to the successor of Bungie, the new Bungie, the new crossbow that I'll be heading into the woods with in 2021. If you're not familiar with Death by Bungie, I've been using the same crossbow for 11 years now, a 2010X caliber Axiom. Love that crossbow. It's just a little dated. It has certainly earned its place in the Bungie lore. I thought I heard him crash when I was in the stand also. And it is going to be retired as I move into the next year. So that's pretty exciting. And now the other exciting thing is I've been looking at crossbow manufacturers, looking at all different options, getting all kinds of feedback, and I want to look at a variety of different crossbows. Barnett is interesting to me. I did hunt with a friend of Bungie, Ron, who attended both our first ever Death by Bungie meet and greet and the second ever Death by Bungie meet and greet as well. Attended both of those, and he was successful both times, of course, bringing home the bacon, so to speak, and shot some wild hogs with his crossbow. First kill with uh, the jackal which was one of my favorite movies. I think that's pretty cool. So that's been my inspiration for doing this video. That's been the extent of my exposure to Barnett crossbows. But let's see what they've got that's new. So let's go to the Barnett website and see what we got on here. Now I just typed it in and we've got that all lined up. We now see Barnett crossbows. That looks like that's probably it. I'll click on that. We're gonna go look over some of their crossbows here and see what we got for opciones, right? What do we have for options? I really like what I'm seeing. First of all, we've got a very modern looking crossbow. And wow, I like something I see already. And that is, look at this foregrip. Look at that. His hand is in a vertical, not horizontal position. I have commented on that from time to time about how I think that this is the way we hold rifles. And the reason that we've always made them this way is just because that's how rifles were made. And this is my thinking. And some people have challenged me on this, and I appreciate that saying that this is actually more effective, more efficient, perhaps. But if I'm holding my hands like this, it's actually better like this for the camera. If I hold it like this, and you can see where my hand is out here, and this is, by the way, when we speak about the meet and greet, this is the wild boar trophy that I was given at the second ever Death by Bungie meet and greet. That is a metal sculpture signed by all the participants and made by Tim Adams. Tim, I really appreciate that. You had commented that you wanted to see that in future Death by Bungie videos, and there you go. It's actually in the background on a lot of them. It sits right here on my desk and reminds me of why we're making these videos, all this good stuff, right? I do appreciate that. This is not a comfortable way to hold a rifle. For, to me, my hands want to do this, not this, if that makes any sense. So that's kind of what I had commented on that before. Now, some people have told me this is more efficient, more effective. Competitive shooters hold their hands like this. Good for them. I kind of like this, and I want to at least try it out. Now that I'm looking at this, it gets me more excited about the possibility of trying out Barnett crossbows, because to me, that's something I might be interested in, having my hands held in that position. That could be something that inspires me to take on a Barnett crossbow. Look at that hand design. Very modern looking crossbow here. What little I know about uh, Barnett crossbows, I think that this is a step through riser is what they refer to. If you see here where my mouse is sort of outlining, your boot can go, the top of your boot would go through here when you're cocking it and you're stepping on the stirrup, but you're actually stepping through the riser. They've molded the riser around that to give more room for your boot to go through there. Very neat design, I like that. So let's see what they got. Shop crossbow, what do we got here, Barnett? We'll look right through here, the HyperTac 420. I'm betting that this shoots 420 feet per second. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. So, and sure enough, look at that. 420 feet per second. Look at that. I was right. Did I get an award? <laughs> Maybe not. Kinetic energy, 149. Some people are saying, who cares about kinetic energy? Why are we putting that on here? It's a measurement of one crossbow's ability versus another. It isn't necessarily the only thing that is important, but if that number were exceedingly low, like 50 or 60 or even 70, I'd be like, why am I buying this crossbow? Because I already have that. So it is a measurement, just like the 420 feet per second is. Mass weight, and I think that re probably refers to the weight of the crossbow, 7.9 pounds. That's in a ballpark that's actually a little lighter than Genevieve's crossbow. 
hers, Bungie Jr. weighs in around, I think, eight pounds. Mine, around nine pounds. So this would be a an improvement for me, stepping down to a lighter crossbow. That'd be kind of nice. We do have, what do we see here that we've got? This looks like it would be some sort of an adjustable stock. I like that. I'm not sure I like the placement of this quiver, but when I look at new crossbows, lots of times I don't see good places for quivers. Um, I suppose that's not bad, but your hand, it's hard to tell in two-dimensional stuff, but I don't want my hand hitting that quiver and having to fit it in between there. With Genevieve's crossbow, it is a little tight getting your hand in there between the arrows on the quiver, and, and lots of times I take the quiver off anyway. With mine, there's plenty of room when you've got 36 inch wide limbs on bungee, there's plenty of room for your quiver, right? There's all kinds of room to hide those things. And we've got the caution sticker on there, very important. That makes me feel really, really good. So there's some other pictures of this bad boy. The side profile, very neat. And yes, it does look like you're gonna have a hard time getting your hand in between the arrows and the trigger. Another profile here. Oh, it sticks out a little bit. Now that's good, that's pretty good. Barnett, good job with the pictures. You're showing me some good stuff here. You're showing me what I wanna know with these pictures. That tilts out a little bit, very interesting. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's not too hard to get your hand in here, right? Mean looking crossbow. I do like what I'm seeing here. Features on this bad boy, we click on features. $200 custom trigger upgrade. Triggers are something that when I started in crossbow hunting over a decade ago, we didn't talk about triggers so much. Match grade, that's for rifle people. That's not for crossbow people. But I do see more and more various manufacturers bragging about their triggers. And, okay, so maybe the trigger is something I should take into account. In fact, I had a friend of Bungie ask me in a recent comment, what are you looking for in terms of pounds of pull on your trigger for the new crossbow that you're looking at? And quite frankly, even today, I'm kind of looking at just Whatever, I don't know that I really care. Whatever they offer is the trigger for me, right? But this one has a three pound zero creep frictionless release technology that is an upgraded trigger. Apparently that's pretty cool. So triggers are becoming more and more a thing of conversation. One thing that bugs me about these things, these cookie things, just get out of there. I don't care about the cookies. Quit, quit taking up my screen with your cookie talk. Other features we got on here. Oh, the Hyperflight 0.204 small diameter arrow compatibility. Compatibility or that's what you got to use. I'm not big on using skinnier arrows necessarily. I wouldn't rule it out. Wouldn't rule it out. But if you're doing the smaller arrow, the narrower arrow, the skinnier arrows as a manufacturer in order to get things faster, I don't like that. I'm not interested in shooting something. When we have a 0 0.30, whatever it is, for our crossbow arrows, I like sticking with that. I don't like going to the skinnier stuff. I like tried, true, and tested. And that thicker design, crossbows typically are not experiencing. We don't talk in terms of spine indexing as much. And there's a reason for that. It's because we shoot shorter arrows that don't have that kind of a problem. And there's people out there right now saying, I know, yeah, oh, you got a spine index every arrow you shoot and all that. You can do that if you want, but you shouldn't have to. And in 11 years of killing deer with a crossbow, I haven't done that. And I don't have accuracy problems without doing that. So I don't want to do that, right? If I wanted to do that, I would go shoot a compound bow. I don't shoot a compound bow because I don't want to deal with that stuff. And that's one reason. There's plenty of other reasons. I like my crossbows. And I like my crossbows with standard arrows that get the job done. And 0 0.204 small diameter arrow compatibility, that bothers me a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. That's something we would try and see. It does have an adjustable length of pull butt stock. <laughs> he said butt. Pass through fore end with multi position pistol grip. I do like that drop down. Ooh, that's nice. The anti dry fire trigger system, very good. I don't know if you knew this, but that's something that I look for in my future crossbow. They pretty much all come with that. But the anti dry fire is something that I need. Rich, you didn't put an arrow in. What are you doing? And you're right. I cocked it and didn't put an arrow in it. Remember, I talked to you. That's what a learning moment this is, a teaching moment. And I might have just put myself out of business. I like the one and a half. That scope looks like a good scope. I'd have to look through it. Can't telescope without looking through it. Aluminum flight track. Now, this is something that I should mention. An aluminum flight track, your rail, if it's machined out of aluminum, probably that tells you it's a higher value crossbow, one that is going to have fewer 
inconsistency issues with accuracy. You, with your synthetics rails, that they tend to have more issues, I think, than the aluminum. But that's one of the ways they keep the cost down. Aluminum, that does tell me that this is their more higher end crossbow, more expensive crossbow. Three Picatinny rails, three is better than two, I guess. Uh, weight, 7.9 pounds. That's right in the ballpark where you're going to see a modern crossbow. Axle to axle inch is 9.1875. That is a narrow crossbow, although I am a little, and it does appear to be a narrow crossbow from this top down view. One thing I want to say about that though, when we talk in terms of axle to axle measurements, that's becoming the industry standard. It looks like talking about axle to axle. We're talking about this axle to that axle, right? That entire distance. That's the distance they're referring to, and that is 9.1875 inches. The problem is that distance is not the whole picture to me. If I'm sitting in a blind, the axle-to-axle -axle distance is not what's going to cause me problems. It's the uncocked width, and it is the outside of those cams or pulleys, right? It's the outside of the limbs, the absolute outside. That's the only measurement of limb width, of the width of a crossbow, that I care about is just the overall maximum. How wide can this thing get? Mine is 36 inches right now. So any crossbow on the market, it's gonna be an improvement. It's gonna get narrower, right? I go from my 36 inches to Genevieve's crossbow, Bungie Jr., down to 25 inches of micro width. That's pretty cool. These go into nine inches, but it's not really nine, it's more like 12. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to go to the outside of these pulleys, the outside of these cams. That's really the true measurement of the width. And uncocked, because when I shoot that crossbow, it's going to expand. If I've got a 12-inch window and this thing's 12 inches wide cocked, that doesn't do me any good because when I pull the trigger, I need 15, and I only got 12 inches of room. So I don't want to hit the edge of the blind. I don't want to hit a tree next to my tree stand. I don't want to hit things with my crossbow as it expands when I pull the trigger. So I really need the maximum width. Any modern crossbow of this design is going to be so much narrower than, and I'm not too worried about it, but it's still, it's still, that's what's the valuable information to me. So I'm just throwing that out there. Draw weight, 215 pounds. How do they get 420 feet per second out of a 215 pound draw weight? That is the mechanical advantage. That is, I don't know if it's a simple machine or if it's a compound machine. Remember eighth grade science when we talked about the differences in those things. But it is the concept is that's just using science, right? It's basic science, but it's using science to your advantage. The recurve crossbows, and I'm not knocking recurves. They have their place. They're fantastic. They've suited me well. There's no question about that. But the recurve technology doesn't have that mechanical advantage. It just has the power the speed that you get out of that crossbow is entirely created by the limbs and how far you can stretch them, right? The only thing that you can increase to get a faster arrow, you can make the arrow lighter, but you don't want to do that, but you can make the limbs have need more power to bend them, right? And Or you can increase the draw length, pull that string back even farther, which is just putting more strain on those limbs. With these pulleys, as you design better technology, the pulleys are giving us that advantage, right? So 215 pounds. Now, if you go 420 feet per second with an Excalibur, let me just check that real quick, right? I'll go right on here. I'm gonna to go to Excalibur crossbows. Boom, we're going right to their web page. Ooh, the twin strike. <laughs> we'll go across here to the Assassin 420 TD, the only push button takedown crossbow, except for the other Assassins and the other Excaliburs that do the same thing. But that is a neat technology. I really do like these crossbows. And we're gonna be looking at these real close too as we go forward with this process of finding a new lunging. But that's a 290 pound draw weight, if that's accurate. I've got my questions about the accuracy, some of the information on the Excalibur site. We'll talk about that in future videos. But there, you're looking at 290 pound draw weight to go 420. This one goes 420 to 215. The cams and pulleys, that's the reason it can, it can achieve those speeds with a lower draw weight. But the difference is too, when I go from bungee at 175 pounds, I can cock that with a rope cocker. 215 pounds, it's gonna be a little bit more work, maybe, but I could probably cock this with a rope cocker. And here's the other neat thing about it, okay? I might not only be able to cock that with a rope cocker, but also 
it has a let off. So 215 pounds is going to become less weight as you're pulling it back. Once you get past that let off, it'll actually be, and that let off is right where you need it too, right? When you're cocking a crossbow, it's the last four inches or three inches that really kills you, right? Because you're running out of back and you can't stand up any straighter and your arms are too long and, and whatever. But that rope cocker, that last, when that let off takes place, you can make that last little distance a little bit easier with that let off. Kinetic energy, 149 foot pounds, power stroke, 15.5 inches. You've got to pull that back, that 215 pounds. And then we got speed at 420. That's pretty cool. I do like what I'm seeing here, all kinds of manuals and stuff we can look at. Well, thank you, Barnett. This is their flagship, I guess, the highest rated of their crossbows. I'm pretty excited about that. That has the step through riser. And that's what I was telling you about before. I, I'd actually looked at these a little bit, so I cheated. But I have been looking at the Barnett's. And here's their crossbows when we look at their other models that they have. The they what a range, right? 450 bucks, 399 bucks, 650, 519, 699. Barnett has a wide range of crossbows. How cool is that? And I'm glad that they do. I really do think that's pretty cool. Now, if we go to Legacy on their webpage, the original crossbow pioneers, I don't think they're talking about these two dudes here. I don't think that's who they're talking about. But if we look down here, they're probably talking about these guys right here that look like they're from the Beatles. And actually, look at the time area. They're saying in 1958, they started making these. Let's read this. Barnett Outdoors, LLC. World's, you know, make a whole bunch of crossbows since 1962. Old Bernard Barnett in the United Kingdom. Huh. So there is a little bit of a Beatle influence in the Barnett crossbows. Huh. Pretty neat. Mr. Barnett began filling orders for his acquaintances. That's good for him. And he moved to the United States permanently in 2003. That's pretty neat. Well, that's pretty cool. Today, they're held by a holdings company, aren't we all, I guess, uh, an industry leader at the helm of some of the top hunting and fishing brands, Plano Synergy Holdings. Wow, isn't Plano Synergy Holdings, is that the same outfit that makes Plano tackle boxes that I have enjoyed since I was a kid? And they make the case that Bungie is currently housed within. It's probably the same Plano outfit. They do a lot of plastic uh, stuff, right? molded cases and all that good stuff. Look at this old crossbow. Now that's crossbow right there. That is actually one of their crossbows. Huh. Well, Barnett, first to offer a crank cocking device. I don't know if I want to thank you or not thank you for that. Not a big fan on the cranks, man. I, I, I mean, I realize they're required, they're necessary, and, and some people couldn't cock the crossbow without it. But to me, I really like a crossbow that I can cock with a rope. And I've witnessed that moving from my crossbow to using Genevieve's crossbow. And I'll talk to you more about that down the road. And if you've been watching Death by Bungie, you kind of know some of the story already. But there's more to this story about the cranks. And I'm not a big fan of the cranks. If I can avoid the crank, I want to avoid the crank. How's that, right? First, to offer a rope cocking device, a brake action cocker, an overloaded sound dampening foot stirrup and a multi-tool rope cocking device. First to offer a rope cocking device, but if you look back, this company was making crossbows in the 50s. So I think they're probably the first to offer an awful lot because they're one of the oldest crossbow companies. I have new respect for Barnett after reading this. I, I'm glad we looked at this part. This is pretty cool. This is good stuff. First to feature an adjustable stock and cheek piece. Good for you. Extended trigger mechanism. The carbon riser technology, a shoot-through foot stirrup, first to patent all these things, a folding one, a quick detach front end. Wow, Barnett was the first to patent a quick detach front end. That's something that Excalibur offers now that is kind of a nice, it's kind of a big deal for Excalibur because the crossbows are so big. But I'm betting that Barnett doesn't even worry about that now. Why would you do that with a compound crossbow because it doesn't take up the giant case to begin with. Cases is kind of an important thing to me, okay? It's kind of a, a point of contention for me because I have a crossbow that is so big, it takes up the whole back of my car. When I got the main to hunt bears up there, I went to put the crossbow in the back of the pickup truck. And he's like, well, that's some case, he says. And it is some case. It's such a big case, it takes up a lot of room in the back. Where are you going to put your bait barrels and everybody else's firearms and everything else? I, the case takes up a lot of space. I actually was looking at a new car, looking to go from the Toyota RAV and upsize that to a Highlander just because the crossbow takes up so much room in the back. If I buy a new crossbow, I don't have to buy that bigger vehicle. 
believe it or not, this is a conversation that I've had, right? That Genevieve and I have had, and my wife and I have had. Barnett was the first to break speeds over 300 feet per second. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. Hats off to Barnett. That was probably a little bit before I got into crossbows. Well, I can bet it was not this guy here that did that. I can bet. He was not the first one to break 300 feet per second, but that is pretty cool. Let's do one other thing here. Now, if we go back to the hyper, right? Let's look at that bad boy. Woohoo! Shooting lights out. That's pretty cool. And if we look at this crossbow and look at the HyperTac 420, we are accomplishing those speeds with that small diameter arrow, but I don't know about the weight of that arrow. Speed test using 380 grain arrow. Now that's important because we're going to run a quick test here on paper. This is just math. This isn't a real in the field test, but we can assume that that's a 380 grain arrow with and including a 100 grain broadhead field point in this case. So if they're hitting 420 with a 380, what could we do? Will it move? That's the question. Oh, we're going to find out. Now, when I click on kinetic energy momentum calculator, I'm taken to this and I get the chance to win something I don't want. I'll X out of that. I'm going to do that every time I go to this web page. I have to X out of that. And when I'm on my phone, I got to do it on my phone. Why do they keep putting that on there? I'm already signed up for Realtree. I'm already signed up for that newsletter. And if you're not signed up for the deathbybungie.com newsletter, you should do so. You should go to deathbybungie.com and sign up for the free email newsletter because you get weekly emails. Not four or five a week. No, I'm not Schwanz. I'm not going to overload you with messages. <laughs> no, you're going to get an email a week with some pretty cool little stories in it, little tidbits, little tips, little updates, trail camera pictures, whatever suits my fancy, right? Whatever we want to share with you. Arrow weight, now I've forgotten what I'm dealing with here, but I think the arrow weight, we said it was 380. I'll go back to make sure. If you don't put the right numbers in, you're not going to get the right answers. 380 grains, right? Now, that is the weight, and the speed is 420. And we are going to hit generate kinetic energy and momentum, and we're going to see if this mooses or not, and I'll show you why. Kaboom! Yes, it mooses. It mooses. Yes. Winners. Okay. Whew, whew, it was a close one. It wasn't really close. They, they all moose, right? Every one of them that I'm looking at is going to moose with the stock arrow. I will not buy a crossbow. Don't worry, friends of Bungie. Will not be buying a crossbow that does not moose. Bungie does not moose out of the box. But the crossbow that I use to replace Bungie in the field going forward will moose out of the box. And this is what I mean by that. We get the, the much deserved and much appreciated, highly revered, moose icon when we shoot this crossbow with a stock arrow and our kinetic energy 148 that's a little more than what they were giving us on their site but you know it's it, it depends on what you're looking at but and the momentum point is 709 slugs that is higher than i can pretty much get i don't think i can get that high with bungee and in fact just to show you the difference got to refresh it but i i think it was a 577 grain arrow, the spinal taps from the friend of Bungie Marshall who sent those to me. Still have them, still going to use them, still going to play around with them. Might even hunt with them again, who knows? They're awesome. Arrow speed on those bad boys, one of the reasons I want to upgrade is because it dropped me down into 251 feet per second. Some people are like, well, that's it. You could kill any deer with 250 feet per second. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to. You know, I don't I don't want to hunt with 1980s speeds. That's not what I'm interested in. Generate kinetic energy. Now that does moose, but look at the numbers. One, the eight, the kinetic energy is down to 80. And even at that higher heavy weight arrow, which in my opinion is about the highest, it's the highest I have gone, won't go much higher. That is a spinal tap, 435 or so with a 150 grain broadhead. Don't quote me on these numbers, but we're at a 0.643 is the most momentum we can get with that crossbow, with that arrow at least. That, you know, you, you and you're playing around with it and dropping the speed so far in order to get to those numbers. If we go in there, load that again, go to our stock arrow of 380, and we shoot 420 feet per second, yes. Boom, and we hit generate that kinetic energy we are at 148 and 0.709 so we've outpaced it with the momentum right out of the box 
just using a stock arrow with a 100 grain broadhead. Now, what if I want to take this crossbow, the hypertack here, and we want to shoot that for 20 feet per second? We're going to lose a little speed if we go up in weight of arrow, but I want to use the Rage Tripan, 150 grain broadhead. I love that broadhead. What if I want to step up a little bit and wait? So we're going to go 380 plus 50 because this is a 100 grain broadhead already on here. But if I take that 380 and I increase it by another 50 grains, we're at 430, 400. We got to refresh. Got to refresh, Rich. I'll get this down. 430. And if we go from here and we go arrow speed there. Now, we're guessing because I'm not out in the backyard shooting it. But if I add, if I put a 150 grain broadhead on there and add that 50 grains, what am I doing to my speed? To some extent, we're going to have to guess, but you can expect to get between one foot per second to one and a half foot per second off, and lose that for every five grains that you increase the weight of your arrow or broadhead. So when we add 50 grains, that's like 10 five grain sections, if that makes any sense. So we'll multiply, we're, when we multiply the one to one and a half times 10, we get, we're gonna lose between 10 and 15 feet per second. Now this is a compound crossbow. And from all my reading and talking to people, they don't handle increases in weight quite as efficiently as recurves. So you're gonna be on the higher end of that. We'll say 15 feet per second we're gonna lose. I know with bungee, I lose about 1.25. That seemed to be the math for me, okay? When I would increase weight, I could expect to lose about 1.25 feet per second for every five grains that I added. That adds up. So here, I bet our arrow speed, instead of shooting 420, we're probably gonna shoot like 405. So I'll type that in. Now it could be more, it could be less. We're just gonna type in 405. What do we do here? All of a sudden now, we have 156 foot-pounds of kinetic energy and momentum at 0.773. And it is more than adequate out there in the woods. And it allows me to use the stockpile of Rage Tripan broadheads that I have. I bought a bunch of those because Genevieve has them. She likes them. She's used them. They're good, durable broadhead. I love them. Happy to switch to them from the 100 grain hypodermic if I go up to this crossbow or any crossbow, I'll probably be using this 150 grain broadhead just because I want a little bit more mass up front, a little bit more front of center. I'm not going crazy. I don't need to be adding lead to the front end of my arrows or whatever it is these guys do, right? <laughs> just going to just up it a little bit, right? We're already shooting crossbows. We're already moosing out of the box. Just want a little bit more. That's all. Plus, I want to use up all these broadheads. And I really like the broadheads. I'll do some videos on broadheads down the road. But wow, so that's the way we wrap up this video. I might go through and do every manufacturer out there, look at their webpage and do a video about it. Let me know what you think. Until that next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.